Thank you for joining my session on tools in Blackboard, new and old. I have a bunch of options of tools that are new, some that are new, some that are available to you, some that are not yet, and then also um, some tools that have, have been available for a while. And so I just wanted to get your input on what you want to see. So I will cover as much as you want. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is, in the top left corner of your screen, you should see some tools. And if you click on the little pencil icon, you'll get an option to draw on the screen. So you can choose the, from the color wheel what color you want, and then, yeah, just circle whichever ones you want to see. So go ahead and just take a minute and circle away. So to give you some information on a couple, so you won't know what Ally is, but Ally is an accessibility tool which will allow you to, um, it'll give you feedback on what, um, how accessible your items are in your course. So whether it's a PDF or an image or a Word document, it will say, hey, this one is not quite accessible and here are the ways in which you can make it accessible. Um, and then it used to not have the ability in Box to download students' feedback, or the feedback you give to students. So if you box, put little boxes on it and type notes into it, um, now students can download that, and you can download a, that as well so that they can save your feedback. And then the Performance Dashboard and Retention Center are all about um, our students meeting deadlines, um, in the class? Are they logging in at certain intervals? Um, how are their grades in the, as opposed to other people's grades or whatever metrics you've set for them? And you can kind of start to track risk at-risk students and it will send you email alerts to say, hey, so-and-so is still struggling. Uh, let's look at them. And you can email them or reach out to them and help them. So it's kind of a tool for you as an instructor. And then just going over Grade Center options to more optimize your Grade Center. And then uh, you also have notification alerts as an instructor in all of your courses that you can actually make different course by course, or you can make it all the same for all courses you teach. But it allows you to set up email alerts when certain things happen. So if you always want to know when someone submitted an assignment, you could, have, you could set up an alert for that. So, if you, in the chat, let me know if you're done circling, just go ahead and say yes, three of you. and Jason are done. Joel? Good. Okay. Okay. So I will just go down. Actually, I will do Ally first because that will be a little easier. Um, capture Space Light and then Collaborate Ultra. And we'll end where we are. So I'm going to share my screen and Will you remember that for me? Ally, Capture Space, Collaborate. Ally, Capture Space, okay. Collaborate. OK. OK. All right, so you should be seeing my screen now. I think it's in here. OK. so. Um, Ally is the new tool for accessibility, and it will be coming out in uh, mid-June for you to start uh, testing and be able to use it for your summer courses. And so when you're going in, you'll see on any image or file in Blackboard, you'll see a little um, icon, and it's an accessibility score. So if you hover over it, it says high, if it's green, it's high, if it's like orangish, it's in the medium, and then if it's red, it means it's really low. So if you click on it, you'll get a panel that pops out that says, you know, specifically this 
this image. It's 77% score. It's pretty good. Um, and then it kind of gives your issue. So it has some contrast issues, which I can actually see because you have a really light blue with the white. So there's probably a better color for inside these two colors uh, instead of white on light. So what I could do is I could, if I had access to this image, which I personally do, of course, I have designed, I would go and find that file, I would change that, and then I would uh, browse and upload it here, and then it will give me a new uh, score. So as I scroll down, you'll see it on you know this little image, it's green, and perfect score. <laughs> And then you'll see this tutorial is orange, and if I click on it, it'll pop open, and it has a lot of issues. So if you click on all issues, it'll list them. So the PDF has no title. That's pretty simple. Um, so I usually, we put the titles in the headers, so I would just need to tag it as a, as a title for it to show up in uh, accessibility tools. And then the other one is that the images are missing descriptions, and that would bring the score up to this. And what this one shows is it actually highlights all of the images that do not have descriptions within the file. So that red marking around it is not mine. It just automatically finds the images and tells you where they are and what's wrong with them. So then I could go to my file if I owned it and I could update all those images with descriptions and re-upload it and then I would get a better score. So that is for like external files. So for PDFs or, or Word documents you're going to have to like find the file and update it and then re-upload it. But if you have an image directly in Blackboard and say it only needs um, a description, it'll open it and it'll say you know, this doesn't have a meaningful description. And it has a couple options, you know, what does this mean and how to write a good one, good one. And I just have breadcrumbs. So instead of that, I would update it right here in Blackboard in this little um, thing that pops open. And I would say, okay, it's a picture of the breadcrumbs for this course, which shows discussion board and that icon forum module one discussion that icon thread dq one so that's a fairly descriptive I save it and it says yay you've added a better description and then uh, second one that's the last 25% is saying the image contains text that is not in the description. So you'll see the introduction to teaching and learning in Blackboard. If I wanted to make it better, I would say for this course, instead of saying this course, I would say for the course introduction to teaching and learning in Blackboard. And you'd think I could type Blackboard since I work in it so much. And then save and I must have missed a word or two. It's possible that it's um, say it's multiple, so there's these and this. I'm not going to do it twice. So it's pretty good. It's green. I'm going to say it's, it's pretty good. And then you can just go through the rest of the course and add descriptions or edit the documents and make sure that it's all um, accessible. And what that does is it allows anyone who's using accessibility tools like JAWS or to, to read their screen that it actually knows what to read and it has something to read. So if it comes upon an image that is, doesn't have a description, it's going to say image with no description and then it will move on to the next paragraph for the next item. Um, and then with like documents or PDFs, it, if it doesn't have a header, it'll say, this document has no header. And then it'll just start reading the document. And if it doesn't have you know, minor headings either, it doesn't quite know how to read it to, it'll just kind of read everything. Whereas if it's organized in a nice way with actual headings and tags in the document, the person who's reading, who's 
listening to it using an accessibility tool can actually say, skip to that section, and it will go directly there. So any questions about Ally? When is it going to become available? Ah, awesome. So it will become available mid-June. So we don't have a specific date yet, but it will be probably right as soon as spring quarter has ended. Uh, so you can start prepping for summer quarter. Um, oh, I forgot one of the best parts of this. Um, so that's for the instructor to allow you to make sure everything's accessible. One of the greatest things that's available, going to be available for, for students, is that anything here, I'll look at a student view. So if I go into student preview, and say you have you created a Word document or PowerPoint uh, or a PDF with your content in it, and you upload it to the week, and you know read this. Go back to dashboard, and maybe they don't want to read it. <laughs> maybe they want to listen to it. So with Ally, they can hover over this dot, drop down next to the file, and used, it used to just say open and now it has an alternative format. And when they click on that, it will actually give them four to five to six options depending on their, uh, what the file is. So it will always have an audio file. Um, it will have the electronic braille file and then the HTML. So sometimes it doesn't have the EPUB, but everything that it can give you, it will give you. Um, and I've listened to the audio file and the person who's speaking, or it's not a person, it's the, the um, technology person who's speaking automatically is really good. It actually kind of sounds like a real person. There, you, you can tell at fairly frequent times that it, um, it'll sound like technology, but it is not that when you have like a screen reader and it's like, this is the technology of the, it does not sound like that. It sounds like a real person. It's pretty great. Um, Jill, has a question? Yeah. Uh, Joel has a question. On a tutorial that you'll make for this, can you provide examples of good, okay, and bad percentages so we can see what they look, hear, etc. like? Yeah. Thank you. Great feedback because we haven't made those yet. <laughs> so that would be great. We, I will write that down to do. Um, so it's great for, for students because then, you know, and it says, you know, each one what it's best for. Um, if you're using electronic Braille, you, I've tried, <laughs> you need an actual reader for it, which I do not have, so I haven't actually seen what that looks like. Um, but the HTML for mobile, EPUB for iPad and book readers, and then the audio. And then if it is, this is a PDF, but if it was a Word document, it would give you a PDF version of the Word document. And then you can download it and listen to it. Um, you can download all the options if, you, if the student wants. So this is a great tool that students can use for all of uh, Word type reading documents. Any other questions on that? Will it be automatic? Will all classes have it? or will it be Will it be something that we'll need to upload to? Uh, great question, Elizabeth. All classes will have it. So when we turn it on in June, every single class, every master shell, every live shell, every my workspace shell will have it. So it and it will automatically start reading all of the files in every single course and give it a score. So. So we will move on to Capture Space. So in Blackboard, uh, you will all have a My Media module here on your main page in Blackboard. And when you click on that, you will go into the Kaltura area. And uh, we'll do Add New. And right here is Capture Space Lite. So I will say, try to ignore webcam recording as much as possible. We have had lots of issues with it and I'm working to try to get it just taken off the options list because it doesn't work. Uh, but Capture Space Lite is what you want. 
So if you've never used it, it's going to ask you to, it won't have this launch application item, it will just have this page, and you'll want to download it for Windows or Mac, depending on what you have. And then once you do that, it'll have, you know, like, run it and open it, um, and then when you open it, you'll have to come back here to Courses and My Media and then Capture Space Lite, and then it will give you this launch application. I'm using Firefox, so it looks like this, but if you're in Chrome, it'll look slightly different when it launches, but it'll probably be kind of right up here and be a kind of a long uh, vertical box that will say, hey, do you want to open this? Uh, application and you'll say yes I want to open the link and it will set up and it will pop up in the bottom right of your screen so you'll have these four options so if you want to just do voice if you just want to do webcam and voice you can if you just want to share your screen you can do that and then if you want to do all three you can do that as well so when you do all three and I think I can do this because I'm not using my technology for other things. Uh, when I record, I'm going to do full screen. And then so I can take this, and I can actually make it different sizes, and I can drag it. So once I go in, I can be showing my desktop. I could make an announcement like this. I could make, you know, any type of video for my students so that they can see me while I'm showing my screen. If I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, I could also do that. So if you want to do a lecture and you actually want your students to see you, you can do that. So this is a great tool uh, for that. Where is my tools? So you'll see here I have some tools here. So when I'm sharing my screen, I actually can use the draw tool to uh, have a pen. It can be large or small colors. And I can highlight things. Um, have a highlighter, you know, drawing, lots of different things. So if you're in a PowerPoint or if, you know, this is my actual desktop um, screen and I'm highlighting it. It's pretty great. Um, but students will be able to see that in the uh, recording and then when I like when I hit done it just goes away so it's pretty great so once I'm done doing my video I hit done and it will start to render it and save it and at this point I can do some quick editing so I could trim it if I don't like that beginning um, I can chop it in between and then when I'm done, I click done, and I want to edit the original, I want to create a new, I want to, and then you can name it. And if you save it, it will save to the application on your desktop. So if I hit save, it'll go to my library. So this is the main uh, Capture Space Lite icons, and in the tab of library is where anything that hasn't been uploaded to Kaltura in Blackboard lives. So if I, for, if I just save it and I forget to upload it, I can come back and say, okay, it was on March 19th and I didn't name it. I want to upload it now so I can save it as a screen desktop. And then I upload it and it will automatically upload it into Blackboard. So when I go to my media, And click on my media. It will show up here. So it'll take a minute, so you'll see it's still uploading. Um, but then it's there, and I can then go into my class, and I can put it into an item, I can put it into an announcement, and it's done. So the last five minutes, I'm going to go over collaborate with you. So we're going to do... And feel free to type any questions while I'm going over it. Um, actually, type any questions about Collaborate. Collaborate is a lot 
a lot of things. <laughs> so do you have specific questions about how to use Collaborate? Because we're in Collaborate right now. So we have the chat tool, the participants panel. Um, you can individually chat with each other. So if you want to start a chat with a specific person, you can actually do that by um, clicking on their name in the attendees panel. So go, I mean, if you want to try that, you can go ahead and do that now. So in here, if you click on the three dots, you can, there's an option to chat here. So if I just share us, we'll see the chat area. If I want to talk with Jason, I could send a chat message. Just Jason. That was supposed to say hi. <laughs> and you'll see as a moderator, I actually see my chats with people, but then if you guys were to create any, I could see what you guys were creating. So if Joel, you want to start a conversation with someone here individually. Yeah, so the attendees panel for the list of people, if you go to there and click on the three dots next to their name and start a chat message, you can individually chat with someone. Any other questions about Collaborate? All right, we'll, we'll end with something kind of fun. Uh, down here in the middle of your screen, you'll see uh, probably just a profile image and a little check mark. If you check that, you'll have some feedback options. Ooh, got to stretch. Um, and I can see, so you, you are all listed here in the panel. And if I open that and I say, I'm surprised, you'll see over here that my little image becomes a surprised face and it will tally them up at the top for me. And they last for about 30 seconds and then they go away. So it's kind of a fun way to, you know, if you're going really quickly or slowly, you can say, you know, if I'm going too fast, like just click slower and then you can monitor the uh, chat or the attendee panel and see, oh, there's, you know, four people are smiling. That's great. Or, you know, seven people are thinking that I'm going way too fast, so I'm going to slow down. It's kind of a fun uh, little option in a, in a session. And that is all for me. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, there will be a link here in the um, chat to take uh, an evaluation of the presentation. So please fill it out and give your feedback. It will help us with next year. And thanks for joining.